All right, what's up, guys? Part two of the introduction to Maya, just learning the basics through creating some basic chess pieces. In this video, we're going to be looking at a few uh, more basic uh, functionalities, such as um, combining, separating, booleaning, and some more just edge vertice manipulation, um, and hopefully creating a bishop. So right now I've got the pawn open, which I created in part one. Um, and one basic function that I don't think I went over, whoops, let's go ahead and read get my face cam going on there. Um, one other function that I don't think I went over with this was combining and separating. Um, if I select multiple objects, I can combine, which is basically akin to grouping, where now if I click on these objects, it selects the whole thing at once. Um, if I wanna have them be individual objects again, I can just separate them, but that's just an easy way of cleaning up or like just organizing your document so that one group of objects can just be combined into one more object. So let's go ahead and start making a, um, a bishop because the bishop's a little bit more advanced. So I think a bishop, chess piece, I think a bishop is most known for that little incision at the top um, where it looks like a cut has kind of been taken out of it. Uh, so let's figure out how the heck we're gonna make that. So it's got this cool little egg shape. The rings are easy, we figured out the rings. It's got this kind of like center cylinder, which we kind of figured out in the last one. Um, so let's take a look. Back to Maya. <clears throat> let's go ahead and start with my cylinder. Let's, again, using W, E, and R on the keyboard to switch between move, rotate, and scale. Let's scale this guy up vertically. Um, if you remember, we could hold right click down and we could switch from object mode to something like edge, vertex, or face mode. If I select vertex mode, I can select all the vertexes on one of the sides of it. Make sure I move my camera so I can select all those vertexes. Um, and then I can move or scale or rotate all those vertexes at once. I can move them one way or another or I could scale them up from the center. Um, one other uh, more advanced function or tool that I haven't shown yet is called the multi-cut. I click on this guy down here, I'm still in modeling toolkit, if I click on this guy, then it basically gives me a tool that can cut different incisions um, into the geometry of a shape. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold control on the keyboard and it changes the little incisions from vertical to horizontal. I can basically create new sets of vertexes to select and manipulate. So I'm gonna just go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and create two new row, rows of vertexes. Go back to my selection tool. And now I can, manipulate those vertexes individually too. So what I can do is maybe I want to select this row, make sure I have them all selected. Maybe I want to select these bottom two rows and scale them out a little bit more. Maybe I want to select this row and scale it out even more. Maybe I want to select these two rows and then switch to move and move them down. And now I've started to get that like little tiered um, that little tiered system that, or like uh, from just a basic cylinder without having to use different rings. <clears throat> so, uh, what did I say? Next step, we learn combine, we learn separate, I show multi-cut, boolean. So let's try that egg shape. Um, there's no egg uh, piece up here, here. So if I create a cylinder, I think an egg is basically an oval. Um, but if I'm thinking of an oval, or an egg, an egg isn't just an oval because it has a wider bottom and a narrower top. So a few ways to maybe do that. Maybe I want to select the uh, vertex mode again. And maybe I want to select all the vertexes in the bottom and scale them out a little bit or maybe like push them up a little bit slowly one by one. There, there could be a, a different way of doing that or a little more tedious way of doing that. If I go to object mode, now I want to think about how I'm going to create the incision from this guy. Um, the function called boolean lets uh, two objects interact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create rectangle. Let's flatten this guy out, wide them up. Um, I'm going to create a rectangle that I'm basically going to use to cut a hole out of my egg shape. So let's go ahead and put this rectangle into a position where the overlap is what I want to cut out. Maybe a little bit more of an angle there. Oh, to, to do this movement, uh, to kind of scroll, I hold Option and the center mouse button. So the scroll wheel, I press the scroll wheel down and I can move um, or I can pan the camera. So let's go ahead and rotate this guy a little bit more. And now 
if I hold, or if I click on my first object, the one that I want to keep, and then hold shift and click on the second object, then I can see the first object selected in white, the second in green, and I can click on this boolean function over here. Boolean is a function that, again, interacts two objects, and I have different kinds of operations over here. This first one, union, has united the two objects. This is different than combining, because combining, they're still seen as two objects. U union, or uniting, just turns it into one object. If I change union from here to difference, now it has taken the difference, or the, uh, the overlap, and it has subtracted the second object from the first, and that creates the kind of shape that I was looking for. Um, now if I notice, after I boolean an object, the pivot point moves, because the pivot is now like the center of where the two objects once were. Um, but if I wanted to just be this object, then I can really quickly go to modify, center pivot, and boom, I'm right back, and I'm starting to get the basics of a bishop. After this, all I gotta do are rings and all that. Um, so that's just a few more basic functions of Autodesk Maya. I'm, again, I'm using 2019, but I taught the same project on 2017 and 2018. Um, so take your time with it. Make sure you're using a reference. Make sure that you're like checking back and forth between your photo reference and what you're making, because that's the only way that you're gonna make it look real instead of just relying on what's in your head. Um, <clears throat> and that is part two of Introduction to Maya through creating a chess piece.